Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. I'm super excited about today's video. Today we're going to be talking about one of the biggest leaps that were taken in GFCI technology in the 2020 code and now that it's carried over to the 2023 code. Let me set this set the stage first. So in previous code cycles, in basements, it was only required GFCI protection if they were unfinished basements. And then in the coming years, things started changing about the definition of an unfinished basement. Back in the day, if it had a concrete floor and the ceiling was exposed, right, it was an unfinished basement, pretty easy definition. But then we started noticing a trend of people taking these basements, spray painting the ceiling black, can lights and all, and putting a rug down and calling it a finished basement and it now, quote, not needing GFCI protection. So instead of blurring the lines in between unfinished and finished and letting that be an AHJ call, the NEC has made the call for us. And I'm all about this change, and I'll explain why here in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about the code. So starting in the, you know, leaving the 2017, coming into the 2020, this is when the change was made. In the 2017, it was still unfinished basements or unfinished portions of that type area. Now in the 2020, it's required for all receptacles. And we're going to find this in 210.8. I do want to make a quick distinction. We're not talking about outlets only here or outlets. Remember, an outlet can be lighting, receptacle, or hardwired. Now, there are going to be some locations in that basement that are still going to be required to be GFCI protection if it is hardwired, but today we're talking about receptacles only. So if you can plug into it, it's a receptacle by definition. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The new code states that all receptacles that are 120 through 250 volt receptacles are required to be GFCI protected in basements. This started in the 2020, carries on into the 2023, and I don't look like I don't look for it to be taken out of the 2026. But let's go ahead and look at what we're talking about. So it doesn't matter if we're dealing with a duplex receptacle like on the left or if we're dealing with this dryer receptacle, four wire dryer. If it's in a basement, it's going to be required to be GFCI protected. This would also include air conditioning 240 volt receptacles. This would also, um, you know, welders. Doesn't matter what type of receptacle or what piece of equipment it's for, it is required to be GFCI protected with very limited exceptions. You can look and there's a couple of them for maybe security alarms or different things. You can go look in those exceptions. But in general, all 120 through 250 volt receptacles that are located in basements are going to require GFCI protection. And this is huge. This is a huge change. First, let me talk about the, the drive for this change, and then we're going to talk about my opinion on the change. So unfortunately, in the code, if there is changes in these type of technologies, often there are deaths associated with these changes. And I believe the story that I remember the most is that a child was playing hide and go seek in a basement, got behind a dryer and was shocked and killed by the dryer and electrocuted by the dryer. Now, when we start looking at these jobs, we start thinking about the cost, don't we? Well, what's it going to cost? And, but I got to ask you a question. Would that parent give any amount of cost to have their child back? And the answer is yes. What would you give to have one of your children back? How many breakers would you buy? How much safety would you provide? And, you know, this was a freak accident you know, that, that, that this happened. It's not something that happens all the time is what I meant by that. It's, it's not something that happens all the time, but the one time that it happened was more than enough to change, to drive a change, in my opinion. Everybody should be protected inside of their home. So in the 2017, if it, in that case, you would have, you would have needed, um, if it was an unfinished basement, you would have needed dual function technology already because it would have required AFCI protection. And then you would have had GFCI protection in the unfinished basement. Now in the 2020, you might as, you might as well put all dual function breakers on these 120 volt basement receptacles because it's required to be AFCI by 210.12 and it's required to be GFCI by 210.8. So that's what you're going to have to do on all the 120 volts. So it's, you're talking about dual function technology. Now, when you get into the 250 volt range, like your dryer, for example, it's not required to be AFCI protected just yet. And you also have to work with your local codes, local ordinances, and the laws of your land. And of course, work with your electrical inspector. 
but it is now required to be GFCI protected. So we do have to budget that in to our cost. If let's say I had an air conditioner in the basement that was 250 volt that would previously not need it. And then I have a dryer. OK, and then I have, let's say, a welder just for ease. I've got three new devices. It's probably going to add about three hundred dollars to my panel schedule, isn't it? So we just have to think about these associated costs when we're going to build. And now I'll give you my opinion on this code and what I think about it. I think it's an excellent change. Think about it for a minute. When you're in a basement, you're often grounded or you're around grounded parts, whether it's venting, ducting, piping, concrete floors poured walls, masonry walls, however you want to look at it, you're often, you know, you're expor exposed more often to grounded pieces of equipment or things that would put you at a different potential. That's a better way to put it. Things that would put you at a different potential. So like a, if you're up on a wood floor and you're isolated and maybe wearing shoes, you're likely not going to be at a difference of potential. Potentially, even with the wood shoes, you're not going to be at a difference of potential. But the moment you put your, uh, not wood shoes, wood floors, <laughs> wood shoes, we're back in the Abraham Lincoln day. But anyways, um, it was some wooden teeth. Anyways, uh, you know, when you're on wooden floors, you might not be at a difference of potential either if you're just on wooden floors. But when you put yourself on concrete floors, you are definitely going to be at a difference of potential. And in the basement, we just have these hazards prevalent. I really think this is a great code. I am all about GFCI technology and AFCI technology as well. But GFCI technology, if current is leaking, it's going to shut off. That is the most important thing. 100% of deaths associated with the use of electricity are from leaking current or, you know, well, let me say not 100%, but 100% of the deaths that are resulting from current flowing through someone's body are from leaking current somewhere. Okay, that's a safe way to put it. If you died from electrocution, from leaking current, or from you know current flowing through your body, that current is technically leaking. It's leaking onto you or going through you. Now, there are other ways to die from electricity, arc flash, all that. But if current's flowing through your body 100% of the time, then it's going to be from current leaking. And current leaking through you back to the, back to the source, you know, going through the earth back to the source, you being at a difference of potential, however you want to look at it. But it's super important that we understand that GFCI technology, if it has a you know four to six milliamp discrepancy, if we're talking about uh, just regular GFCI technology, then it's going to shut off. So if it counts one amp going out the hot, it better have one amp coming back in on the neutral. And if there's any discrepancy there, four to six milliamps worth of discrepancy, it's going to shut off and save that person's life. GFCI technology is the, the number one technology um, for electrical life safety. Other countries require it on all circuits. Um, you know, or, you know, many of their circuits in, in their, they call it a different, they don't call it GFCI technology like we do, but in our, in our, you know, the United States and in other areas, we call it GFCI technology and it's going to interrupt that circuit if there is a ground fault or if it, or if there's current leaking. So it's super important that we understand how these technologies work and for two, that we know where to install them. The third thing that I want to talk about today is that retro work. So not only does this code apply for you doing new installs, but if you are a service worker or you go out and do service work, you or troubleshooting or whatever, you need to know that if you, you know, 2020 and later, if you change a receptacle in an area that's required to be GFCI protected, you have to bring that space up to code. So if you're changing a receptacle in a basement, it's going to have to be on dual function technology if it's 120 volts or less. If you're changing that dryer outlet and it's in a basement, whether it's finished or unfinished, it's required to be GFCI protected as well. So it's super important that we understand what we're doing when we're doing new construction installs, the costs associated with these, and the codes that we're required to you know, fulfill. While at the same time, if we're doing service work, and I feel like this is where most of the hazards you know, arise from or the liability that you take on by not understanding the code and applying it. Yes, it's more expensive. Yes, it's going to drive the cost of that service call, but the only one liable at the end of the day is the installer. And if you go out and change a receptacle in a GFCI area, don't GFCI protect it, there's very little grace in a courtroom if somebody gets hurt. It's very basic technology, and it's been code for a very long time. It's not a controversial technology. GFCI technology is not. So it's super important that you understand what you're doing when you're out in the field and the liability and the risks associated with your work. I don't want you guys to ever be fearful, but I do want you guys to be mindful. Stop. 
I do want you guys to be mindful of where you're at, what you're working on. All we want at the end of the day is we all want to make a good living, right? We all want to be able to provide for our family, have that respect and that power that we're looking for. Or if you're a homeowner, you just want to have a safe home, don't you? So it's super important that you understand where you're working and the surroundings that you're working in and how to make that space code compliant. That's why I hope every day that these videos add a little bit of value to you, and my bargain is that you will in turn add, video, add value to others. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and if there's anything that I can do to help you in life or business, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.